Okay, before uh, guests start arriving, let's talk about some of the unique challenges of filming a ceremony in a Catholic church. Also, I have the gorilla pot. Oh! <laughs> okay, we won't do that. So yeah, a little bit of a sensationalist title, but but what did you think? Did you think I was going to talk about like Bridezilla's in this video? Come on. What's up guys? My name is Dave with Amari Productions and this week we are continuing on the story from last week, which if you haven't seen that video, I think it's this side. Click here uh, where we went behind the scenes on an entire wedding day, a same day edit no less, uh, and vlogged it. This was just one of the most fun projects uh, we've done in a long time. We filmed it back in January before, you know, yeah, there's there's one film that uh, that you watch over on our channel. Maybe make it this one, not this one, that one. But also stay here and watch this one. I, this is terrible. My average watch time is now going to be atrocious because I basically just told you to leave. Don't leave this video. I'm rambling. We're not going to use this. Beep. But yeah, we're not talking about bridezillas or, or difficult couples. We're talking about difficult situations to film in. And, and yeah, an interior, uh, specifically a church wedding. I said Catholic churches in the beginning, but this is any any church wedding. Uh, it is. It is the most difficult wedding to film. And obviously, it is one of the most common wedding uh, settings. So in this video, we are going to touch on what those challenges are, how we solve them. Uh, so whether you are an engaged couple that is planning your wedding, uh, this could help you as you are either looking for your photographer and videographer to know what to look for to make sure that you're going to get good images and good video from your church wedding or just any interior wedding. Um, or if you are a filmmaker or a photographer, let's help up your game from our 300, 400 plus church weddings over the last 10 years give you some tips and tricks on, uh, on how to improve your your footage uh, or your or your photos from, from church weddings. So without further ado, let's just jump back to January, much simpler times, uh, and jump into this film and then I'll, I'll see you guys in a minute. Speaking of that, one thing I did not cover in this film that I thought about a little bit later that I, that I really want to share with you, I'm going to tag on to the end of this. So make sure you stay through the end. One of the things that can be challenging about Catholic masses is they're usually stacked pretty closely back to back to back. So we are here a little over an hour before our mass starts. So there's a chance that there will be a mass still in session. Let's see if we can get in. The two main challenges of filming a church wedding are lighting and access. Churches tend to be pretty dark and on top of that the light that is present is generally this yellow. This yellow lighting that's just not great for photo and video. Okay, this is actually a great spot to jump in and give you a comparison of what I'm talking about just using some clips from this, uh, from this wedding. Also, I'm filming from home um, so if you hear loud noises, um, I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so there's no such thing as quiet on set. Okay, let me show you something. Oh, I should hit screen record, shouldn't I? Command shift five, display. And I just crashed my computer. So this shot here is, is after uh, it's been um, color corrected in camera and then color corrected in Post and you can still tell it's warm like there's still warm tones in my the white of my shirt on my skin tones It's still a warm shot and that's key to color correction You don't want to try to make every scene look like it was shot in like perfect Daylight white that that's one of the easiest ways to kind of give away um, How much work you put in in post-production and to make it look over processed So we still want it to look warm. That's that's what this scene looked like But this is after a lot of work has been done to to pull a lot of that warmth out because, okay, I'm gonna nerd out here for a second. Sorry, we'll probably cut this. Notice the, the how everything kind of has like a monotone color to it of just basically shades of warmth versus this opening shot. Now, where I'm filming this opening shot is, is not an accident. I intentionally set the camera up here so that I could use the natural light coming in through the back doors to light my subject, which in this case is myself. So let's go back to that other shot. Do you see how much less color information there is in this shot? My eyes, my lips, my skin, they're all just now like shades of warmth. And that's what happens when you get away from white daylight 
light, the more away from white that your light gets. Okay, that was a really long nerd out. It's probably not all gonna go in the film. There's a chance that none of it's gonna go in the film. But isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? We can just kind of A, B really quick in like the same setting, an example to show you just how much less um, definition in color that there is when you have natural daylight um, versus uh, in interior, interior light. The second caveat to that lighting challenge is processional. As dark as churches tend to run, when the doors open for people to start processing, those doors are usually open to the outside, and so you're getting very, very, very bright backlight, which is as unideal as it comes. So we have a couple of options. One, if the bride is going to stand at the door for a second when it opens, there is an opportunity to do a really cool backlight. I've done that at least twice. Katie and Sam, like nine years ago, literally nine years ago, uh, and Patty and Alonzo. But regardless, once people start walking in, you do have to set your exposure for that interior light because that's what's hitting their faces. And so you are gonna end up with shots that are gonna be a little bit dark and a little bit flat with the background blown out. <clears throat> now, there are a couple of things you can do to remedy that. Usually, there's two sets of doors, one coming into the church and then one that actually goes outside. There's like a foyer. So you can talk to whoever's opening the doors and say, hey, when the bride is staging, when you close the doors, after everybody else finishes processing, when you close the doors for the bride to stage, let her in and then close the doors behind her so that there is no light coming in from outside. If you can find whoever's in charge of the doors and have that conversation, that will help immensely because now you're cutting off that very bright, very blue secondary light source. And if you can't do that, the other option you have is your framing to try to frame out the door as best as possible. All right, let's get some B-roll of them getting there. Slider shots. This is another challenge with shooting ceremony and reception details specifically. You want the site empty. You don't want this. You don't want like five or six people like randomly spaced out in the ceremony site. You want it empty or full. Full would be fine too, but you don't want this like 5% full. It's not the best looking shot. So here we have an issue where a lot of family has already arrived. So we need to make the call on kicking people out now or just accepting that we're never gonna get people out because people are getting here faster than they're leaving at this point. <laughs> And then the second and bigger challenge is access. Churches generally have pretty strict restrictions on where photo and video can go. And if their policy is outdated and they're used to older style videography where it's big and cumbersome and on a tripod and never moves the whole time, their policy can be even more constricting where they will say you can have one tripod in the back and you can't move. And if you've seen any of our videos, that is obviously not how we shoot. Don't get me wrong, we are never uh, stepping up to the altar, we're never walking in front of the guest's view, we're always on the periphery, on the sides or the back. The back like as in behind everybody, not, not, not behind the, the altar, behind all the guests. So we always film from the sides or the back anyways, so that we're never distracting anyone, never blocking anyone's line of sight or anything like that. But some churches can have rules so strict that we can't even do that. So there's always this weird tango to do when we first arrive at a church to find the person in charge and just buddy buddy them real hard from the start so that they're not suspicious of us so they're not like thinking that we're gonna do anything wrong so that they will give us the room to work that we need now that being said some churches uh, are completely different some churches will actually go above and beyond and give us access to the back so that we can go around and poke our head out one of the doors to shoot back towards the bride and groom's face when they're kneeling, because for a good portion of a mass, the bride and groom will be kneeling facing forward. And so unless you're behind the altar, you're not gonna see their faces. So some churches will give us access and say, here, here's where you can go, just don't step out where people can see you, just kinda stay hidden in the doorway. But if a church is more strict, one of the things that we will ask you in your questionnaire leading up to your wedding is, hey, if your church has restrictions, 
do you want us to pose as guests so that we can get the shots? It's so funny, like everybody says, yeah, 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 if they have any restrictions, just do whatever you need to do to get the shots. Uh, so we've had to do that a couple times. We've had to sit in the pew directly behind the family, so like the third pew, just act like we're guests with really nice cameras. Um, and then that's literally the only way we can get close enough to get shots of you guys giving your vows. Now, if you are having a church wedding, do not panic. These are challenges, sure, but we deal with them every church wedding we've ever had, and we've probably shot 400 church weddings over the years. The one thing that might be worth checking in with is just do they have any restrictions for photo and video? Most churches these days do not. Over the last like four or five years, I've really seen those restrictions loosen. I think as photo and as video, specifically video, has continued to mature into the industry that it is today. Nowadays, the rules are common sense rules things that we would never do anyways like don't go up on the altar don't walk in front of the guests view things like that but it is worth checking do they have any photo video restrictions and then passing that along to your photographer and videographer so that they can either say those look great like that's that's what we would do anyways or you guys can start having that conversation now before your wedding about like hey this is pretty restrictive like do we want to try to talk to the church about it do we want to oppose as guests do we want to just kind of reset expectations of what the footage or the photos from the ceremony is gonna look like but you can have that dialogue now before your wedding instead of after your wedding I've seen the lady who is in charge today running around I don't think we touched base with her yet but I will fill you guys in on what she says in terms of movement and restrictions but we have filmed here twice before actually as a matter of fact the first time I filmed here was like the second month of our business it was July of 2011 we started in May of 2011 and the second time I shot here was in 2016. I don't remember either time them having uh, super crazy rules, so we should be fine today. Was that just me or was that kind of fascinating to see the noob versus pro side-by-side -side comparison in the exact same setting? I might have just got a YouTube series idea. Also, if you're having a church wedding and you're hearing this and you're starting to stress out, know that there are unique challenges to outdoor weddings that you don't have to deal with. You don't have to deal with wind. You don't have to deal with potentially really harsh light on one of your guys' faces during your vows. You don't have to deal with heat and your guests getting sunburned. You don't have to deal with your brother officiating who has no idea what he's doing and rambles on and forgets to tell people to sit down. Ooh. That looks lovely. So every ceremony setup is gonna have their own unique challenges. These are just the challenges specific to church weddings. Okay, and then last, I didn't think of this while we were filming this live, but this would be my biggest um, final piece of advice. If you are having a church wedding and you are still uh, looking for your photographer and videographer, whoever you're considering, make sure that you see samples of theirs uh, that had church ceremonies because it is just so different it is so much more challenging technically speaking so much more challenging to film an indoor church wedding versus an outdoor you know in the late afternoon uh, ceremony today's cameras are good enough um, that in a in an ideal outdoor scenario you realistically could have all your settings on auto and, and it would look fine like it, to, the, to a layman it would look great but in an indoor space that's gonna fall apart real quick you you need to have real technical know-how you need to have real nuance with your white balance with your exposure uh, and then you have to have a very deft hand in post-production to do enough post-production to get it looking clean and, and in line and matching the rest of the film, but not overdo it. That, that honestly, that is actually the biggest issue I see in younger videographers or you know anyone that's coming to work for us or just well, whatever, what I'm looking at other people for is over-processing of images, over-processing of footage that you can just like, it, it, it stands out to you. Like the, there's just too much done here in post. So if you are having a church wedding, ask to see church samples from any potential photographer or videographer. Have you talked to the church lady at all yet? Yeah. Do you have any weird rules? Just same old. Same old, stay on the side, stay behind the pillar, or parallel mm -hmm. to the pillar. Cool. Okay, so there you have it. Today's rules are standard fare. Um, there absolutely are rules. There will always be rules at a church wedding. But yeah, over the last several years, those rules have relaxed to uh, a point where it's exactly what we would do anyways. So we shouldn't have any troubles today with restrictions or anything like that.
thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you enjoyed this film, please, please, please give it a like. Uh, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, so you know every time that we post. Make sure you're here next week, where uh, I actually don't have my schedule in front of me. I don't, I don't remember what I'm posting next week. So, you know, hey, uh, make, make sure you're tuned in so, so you find out when I find out. <laughs> All right, see you guys later.